you're listening to the Prepper Recon Podcast. For questions, comments, and podcast archives, go to PrepperRecon.com. Ready-Made Resources is a trusted name in the Prepper community because they've been around for 18 years. They offer great prices on night vision, water filtration, long-term storage food, solar energy components, and provide free technical service. Get ready for an uncertain future at ReadyMadeResources.com. Trading Post in the Woods is ran by veteran crisis responders who know how important it is to be prepared. They specialize in comprehensive natural survival remedy kits, preparedness and homesteading supplies, as well as skills training. Visit them online today at tradingpostinthewoods.com. Hey Preppers and Patriots, this is the second half of my interview with John Jacob Schmidt of Radio Free Readout. Enjoy the show. In in a revolution, criminal charges often come ex post facto, meaning that you're convicted of crimes that weren't illegal when you committed them, uh, but, but now under the new regime they are. And right. since we're building our own dossiers for a future communist regime on social media, can you imagine a time when we'd be hunted down for speaking out against abortion or gay marriage or supporting President Trump or even going to church? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, the reason why I can see that is because it's not hypothetical. It is the reality for millions of people around the world right now. Uh, we can look back at World War II history, and we could see those uh, Jews and Christians and uh, homosexuals or gypsies or anybody else that you know the the Nazi regime determined you know was not useful for society. Uh, it could be political dissidents uh, during the Stalin regime in the Soviet Union, where people were hunted and, and killed you know, forty million. Uh, 40 million of you know their own countrymen. Communism is responsible for killing at least conservative estimates, 200 million people in the last in the last century between socialism and com- basically death by your own government. And of course, the overwhelming majority of that communist and socialist governments. So we can look back at historical examples to to see what can happen when they determine a race or a religion or a group of people needs to be gotten rid of and uh we've also see see the pattern you know of the uh, marginalization and then demonization then criminalization then incarceration and then extermination and those are the sequence of events that we see a uh a marginalized and eventually a a targeted group, and we're seeing the the narrative of that being laid right now in the West, especially in in the United States and and in Europe. But you don't have to go back to World War II or Soviet Russia to see that it could happen, because right now, and I've got stories. Of, I follow this stuff closely. Um, we just it was just revealed that a a church in uh, Uganda was just raided. Uh, they killed some men. There's like 80 people in church, and they uh, these Muslims come in and bound uh, bound up the men, killed some, and raped the women. Gang raped them. The, the women. They had people. Some of escaped. But uh, they even had uh, personnel standing outside the church to capture people that were escaping and raped, gang raped the women outside the church as well. It was like the women's clothing was all over the place in the church and around it. And uh, and then they've taken the pastor and his associate pastor and some other staff who are gone. They've they've been gone for, I think, two weeks now in in Pakistan. They're they're doing the same thing. They're catching people that have been converted to Christianity uh, they're hunting them down, and where it's not sanctioned by the state, the state is looking the other way. And uh, you know, so there's there's people that are that are living this reality when a the culture turns on you and decides to start hunting you that you're a problem that needs to be dealt with uh, simply for meeting or simply for praying, uh, or simply for owning a Bible, absolutely. And people say, oh, that could never happen here. But they said the same thing about Germany, which in you know, pre-World War II, coming out of the Weimar Republic, they were 
very modern, uh, very posh society that you know nobody could ever believe that could happen you know in that type of a culture where they're so advanced and civilized and refined and cultured and we had one of the most uh horrific historical episodes of uh of persecuting a group of people you know in world history so yeah it can absolutely happen and um uh, you know the odds right now of it happening in the United States are very low, but things change on a dime. They change very quickly, and it always stuns people when it happens. But when it happens, it's 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 a reality for people, and it's always done in a way that people never thought it could actually happen. And then afterward, every time they say "never again," we'll never let that happen again, and then we just repeat history, rinse and repeat. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. The dollar's lost over 90% of its purchasing power since 1971. Silver, on the other hand, has proven to be a very stable form of wealth preservation over the years. And where do you buy silver? Silver Silver.com, of course. Silver.com offers fantastic prices on gold and silver. Check out silver.com today. Whether your plan is to bug out or bug in, CampingSurvival.com has all of your preparedness needs, including fish antibiotics, long-term storage food, and water filters. Use coupon code PREPARECON for 5% off your order at CampingSurvival.com. Last year, you did a series on Radio Free Readout about going underground. Can you give us a brief synopsis of of that series? Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah. Basically, following that line of thinking that, you know, it's happening in other places around the world right now. It has happened in the past on mass scales uh, from a state nation state level sanctioning of it, uh, where a group of people could be persecuted, hunted down, arrested, thrown in the gulags. Could that happen in the United States? If we follow the same trajectory using historical examples could that happen? Yes. It's it's very plausible. It might not be highly probable at this point, but it is very plausible. So as we continue, and especially through the Obama administration and the left, and now we're seeing the hateful, uh, violent rhetoric and even actions being taken place where people are uh, becoming increasingly violent toward anybody who stands for morality – or conservative American values, it's becoming increasingly probable that that will happen, especially when we have a regime change again in maybe four years, if if they find somebody that can beat Trump. And four years is going to go real fast. So could that happen? Yes. Yeah. So what I wanted to do, based on my background, I started projecting, okay, how can we prepare, uh, especially as Christian patriots, but you don't have to be Christian. You don't have to be a patriot to be hunted down. But that seems to be the target group of the, the the rhetoric and the narrative from the left, who they really, really hate and want to make dead. At some point in the future, following that trajectory, that's the group that is the has the highest likelihood to be on the receiving end of that. How do we prepare people for that eventuality? And so The first series that I did, which I'll be adding to the Underground Project, I'm still working on those audio files, but I'm a very, very busy person. So the first one was The Coming Underground, and that was done in the spring of 2015 or the summer of 2015. Maybe it was 2016. The first one was in, uh, I think, March 21st of of, uh, 2016, the, oh, the, the, the newer Underground series. So you're talking about the one before that. Yeah, the one before that was in the summer of 2015, and that was The Coming Underground. And that dealt with making the case for the potential for the need for Christian patriots to have to go underground, or at least certain elements of them, maybe your leaders, the leadership. Okay, so I I address that from a Christian biblical perspective. Is that the right thing to do? First of all, if you're planning on going underground, aren't you living in fear? Aren't you not trusting that the Lord will protect you? Um, Is there any biblical basis for that? Because the large listening audience are overwhelmingly Christian. Now, most of them get it. They understand where we're at. 
where we're headed. And you don't have to really convince them, but they are dealing with friends or family members or fellow people in their church or the other influences that are that are saying, hey, that's not right. That's unchristian like to be thinking like that, that, you know, working underground or that you'd have to go underground. You're, uh, you'd be breaking the law. You'd be demonstrating a lack of faith in the Lord protecting you, whatever. So I, I addressed it from that perspective because Christians have to be able to to know where they stand. They have to be able to articulate it. And they have to be able to counter some of the arguments, or even if you're not going to argue your point and try to win someone over, maybe you're just going to do what you're going to do because you know what's right. And the other person, they're going to do what they're going to do because they feel that's right. And you, you're you going to be questioning yourself. Am I off base? Is this the right perspective, the right mindset to have? Um, so-and-so over here said, maybe that's not the right attitude as a Christian. Well, I want them to be able to know what they stand for, why they stand for it, to know that they're doing the right thing if they're planning for the future underground or considering that or beginning to, you know, take take steps to I guess build that infrastructure in case the need arises. And I laid cases also real-world cases that are, exist today where uh, solid, strong Christians are facing under uh, facing persecution. They are very involved in the underground church. They are using covert communications, meeting techniques. Uh, they are basically acting like the criminal underground does, whether you're a drug runner or sex trafficker or money launderer or whatever it is. Uh, when you are sought out because of your faith, because you own Bibles or because you're part of a a group of people smuggling Bibles into a region where they're banned, you are a criminal. So how do criminals act? How do criminals live? How can you adopt those TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures to uh, support the underground church? And uh, so that's where I started to kind of, that's where I laid the foundation was the coming underground, basically answering the question, is it possible and would that be right? To do, the next one was the underground project, and uh, now I've got a lot of missionaries that listen and that travel overseas. Many of them in hostile areas uh, that where uh, Christians and the Christian gatherings and churches are heavily scrutinized by their governments uh, or outright illegal. So, the question: What started the underground project? Not the coming underground, but going underground. Uh, that came from a question where somebody said, there is an individual that just found out the authorities are seeking him. Now, we are planning on putting him underground. How would we go about doing it? So I turned it into a hypothetical situation because this could apply to any any person anywhere in the world who's facing this situation. Now, I don't think we're there yet in the United States. But you could adopt this. I don't care if you're in China or Iran or Turkey or anywhere else. You could still apply the same principles if this happened in America one day. So I started taking this real world situation and answering their question. If I were in your situation, how would I go underground? And of course, I spread, you know, I addressed some other options as well. Building the safe house network, operating a safe house, communicating covert communications, using a grid up situ uh, environment. We're not talking, we have, you know, the American readout radio operators network. It's a nationwide disaster preparedness radio network, mostly of ham operators. And we're not talking about that kind of communications. We're talking about how do you communicate with the grid up where there is an internet, there is, uh, you know, uh, security tools available at your fingertips there's encryption, there's uh, an anonymity tools and anonymizing tools that you can use. Uh, how would you function to coordinate stuff with others when they're tapping and monitoring cell phones, when they are monitoring internet traffic and emails? How would you do it? And then how do you actually get a person from point A to point B and get them into the underground how do you act 
once you get them underground, what are some of the things that you're going to have to overcome, some of the challenges that you're going to have to be prepared for? And that became the Going Underground uh, podcast series that I did. So what I did was I took that whole Going Underground series and I edited the audio. So I removed all the, you know, the commercials, the intros, the news and commentary from segment one. I just boiled it down to the content. And that turned out to be what, eight, nine or 10 audio files, part one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to, I think it was nine or 10 uh, audio files just covering going underground. It also dealt with agents. Um, Agents provocateur, informants, um, how to, you know, what, what motivates them, how to identify them, how to avoid them, how to, you know, what to do when you encounter them, that type of thing. Uh, there's actually, and we made a thumb drive that we have available at the Readout Gear Store called the Underground Project. And that's got the Going Underground series on it. It's got agents, informants, agents provocateur, and troublemakers, the uh, audio series that I did. And then we're also going to be adding the coming underground. And we're also going to be adding another one that I did uh, uh, just this last uh, late summer, early fall, uh, called it titled uh, When the Agents Come Knocking. And this was guidance for you or your family members. You get a knock on the door and there's agent so-and-so saying, uh, we're looking for so-and-so. We'd like to talk to him. What do you do? What if you're the man's wife and he's at work and you get that knock on the door? How do you conduct yourself? What do you say? Um, how do you begin? How do you proceed from there? So that was a real popular uh, the podcast. I don't know if that was part one or t I don't know if it was a one or two part series. I got to go back and pull that up. It's in my it's in my folder, my projects that I'm working on. But that'll be added to it. And then there's uh, a what I call the down and dirty guide to encryption, anonymity, and uh, privacy. And these are kind of a prioritized list with links to uh, YouTube videos, to uh, the actual programs where you can download encryption software. And uh, it, it's a step-by-step -step guide to getting all set up so that you can uh, function on the internet and on your computer for, you know, security, privacy, encryption, anonymity, and uh, get somebody going from zero to 60, you know, pretty much right in a day or a half a day or a few hours. Uh, and then, of course, there's there's some other stuff, too, that, that we threw into the thumb drive. There's other uh, open source content that I, I put on the thumb drive as well that, that goes toward that. And then what we did last year, because we've supported, did that answer your question there and then some? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're doing great. Just just keep rolling. <laughs> All right. Okay, so last year when we first rolled out the uh, underground project, the thumb drives, we sell those for like $15 at the Re Readout Gear Store. It's got all of that stuff on it, and plus we're going to be you know, adding more to it. Uh, we haven't added anything to it since we originally debuted that project, but have got stuff that we are going to roll out uh, this spring and uh, add all that. And for everybody who's purchased a thumb drive prior to that, they'll have they have access, and there's instructions in there on how to go to uh, the site to download the additional content to put that on the thumb drive as well. But uh, what we did last year. This is something that's always been very near and dear to my heart is the persecuted church uh, overseas. And uh, so what I did is I took all of the proceeds from last, I think it was September, August or September, all of the sales, all the proceeds from the sales of the Underground Project Thumb Drives, we put toward two ministries that, that we support. One is uh, the Voice of the Martyrs. It works a lot with the underground church and persecuted church. They support uh, a pastor's wife uh, be she, because her, her husband gets arrested. He's sitting in prison uh, and she's lost her income and she's got children to support. So they support those women. They support um, 
the underground church. They support uh, Bible smuggling Bibles into some of these uh, at-risk areas. Uh, they do a lot of stuff. They have what's called the Underground Project. And so we supported that, and we continue to support that. And the other one is the uh, rescuechristians.org. They've done a lot of really great stuff, a lot, mostly in Pakistan, but it, elsewhere as well. Um, I want to say uh, Ethiopia, um, Somalia, people that have escaped uh, Somalia. But, uh, you know, you got some guy that's, um, has charges brought against him for blasphemy because he converted from Islam to Christianity. So now he has an arrest warrant and the police are looking for him. So he, they, they will put him underground, put him into an underground safe house network and get him smuggled out of there. Uh, the rescuechristians.org does stuff like that. The other thing that they do is just amazing. A lot of times these people are slaves. Uh, they're working in brick factories and uh, gravel pits and things like this where you get accused of uh, of a crime because you're a Christian and uh, you, your, your Bible showed. And so they arrest you for proselytizing. You let that Bible show the edge of it stick out on purpose so he would ask about it so you could win him over to Christianity. So – we sentence you to five years to, you know, you now belong to this guy that owns this gravel pit. You're going to pay off your your crime, and we're going to charge you, say, in American dollars, $10,000, which means you're going to be working in that gravel pit for 15 years, away from your family, away from everybody. You're a slave, and you're working basically for free because all of your wages are going to go toward paying off this, this, uh, uh, this fee, this fine. And uh, so what they're doing is these rescuechristians.org, they're going in. It's horrible for women especially because of the things that they endure uh, on a regular basis. But they'll go in there uh, and they'll say, how much for this guy? He owes $5,000. We'll pay that $5,000 for him and uh, you turn him over to us. So, of course, the brick-making uh, business owner, he cashes out, takes his five grand, and they're basically buying – Christian slaves from uh, slave owners and then smuggling them out of these countries or trying to get them returned to their families. So a lot of stuff's going on. We want to, you know, always try to support that, you know, in, in the meantime, we're helping prepare American or Western Christians for the potential for the need for a future underground, how to begin developing that, developing yourself and your mindset and developing the skills and the TTPs to be able to successfully do that or at least heavily tilt the odds in your favor. Uh, and then also missionaries that are operating overseas in uh, restricted areas, as they're called, and uh, other high-risk areas, the, it's, it's been very helpful for them as well to, to prepare them to operate with the underground church and in high risk areas around the world. So it's a uh, very rewarding. Uh, it's been just a, it's been quite a ride that, that just that project in and of itself has, has been um, very rewarding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste a link to radio free readouts, a pod being archives page in today's show notes. And from there, listeners are going to be able to scroll back. Um, I think the most recent, uh, going underground series you, you, you did started on March 21st of 2016. So they can go back and listen to that three part series and then they can find the, the, uh, the ones on agents. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I highly encourage folks to, to go to the, the, uh, the gear, the gear page, the gear shop page and, yep. uh, and, and, and get the flash drive there. I think that's great. And, uh, just get this information now and, and start getting read up on it and, and, uh, developing these skills now before you need them. Because if you try to do this after you need it, uh, it's going to be too late and you, we might have four years and we might not have four years because, you know, uh, revolutions don't always uh, follow a uh, an election cycle. So, John Jacob, uh, tell us when your 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 two weekly uh, uh, 
broadcasts come out now because you've got one on ACN and then you've got one on uh, Radio Free Readout. So tell yeah. us when we can listen to that, where we can listen to it, and uh, and then uh, go through the, the, the things that are available on the gear page one more time for us. You bet. Okay, we have a weekly radio show that we scaled back on, and that was through the American Christian Network. It's a radio. They have like eight or nine stations that cover North Idaho, Washington, uh, Eastern Washington, and Northeast Oregon. Uh, we scaled that back. That was from 11 to noon on uh, every Saturday, and plus live streaming. Uh, but we we switched over to an affiliate of the American Christian Network, and that's the Liberty Broadcasting Service. So we're just um, just doing a 30-minute blast of week in review type of uh, thing uh, from 9 a.m. to 9.30 every Saturday morning. And you can get to that by going to RadioFreeRedoubt.com. And on the right-hand side, uh, toward the top, there's a banner that says, you know, listen to Radio Free Redoubt. You click on that, and it will take you to the various different ways that you can listen, either on the radio, if you're in the area, uh, Spokane, uh, Washington, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho area, or you can click on the live streaming. And then every Sunday evening at 8 p.m. Pacific, we have the live streaming uh, Radio Free Redoubt podcast, which are vary between an, an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. And then those are also uh, our Saturday shows, uh, radio show, and then the Sunday podcast are both uploaded to our Podbean uh, site, which are linked right there from the website, uh, so you can listen to those. I also produce a what's called partisan radio podcast dealing with emergency communications, uh, disaster uh, radio communications networking, and digital communications. And we do a lot of fun stuff with uh, one-time pad encrypted messages and uh, drop uh, drop sites uh, on the internet where people can go and know, find a, uh, a, a hidden message and decrypt it. And so uh, that's a lot of fun. We do that kind of stuff on Patriot Radio, and uh, I'll be coming out with one of those. This, uh, usually try to every Monday evening, but uh, depending on my schedule, sometimes there's a gap of, you know, uh, weeks at a time, a couple weeks before I can get one out again. Uh, as far as the, the Redoubt Gear Store, you can also click on that. Uh, from RadioFreeRedoubt.com or Amron.com, on the right-hand side, there's a banner uh, that says American Redoubt Gear, where it's, you know, window stickers, T-shirts, hats, and that kind of thing. But also at the top of the web, uh, both of those web pages, there is a, a picture of a thumb drive. It says Patriot on it. Uh, those since have been changed. Now our new thumb drives have the Radio Free Redoubt logo which is a skull and crossbones with the headphones, kind of pirate radio uh, type of a logo. It says Radio Free Redoubt on it, and uh, we've got to get that updated. But uh, you click on that, and it will take you to the, radio, the Redoubt Gear Store uh, to the uh, Underground Project Thumb Drive page at the Gear Store. And uh, those are uh, 15 bucks for those, and we'll be adding more content. John Jacob, thanks for everything you do for the Prepper and Patriot community, and uh, thanks for making time to talk to us today. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure always, and like you said, we'll have to do it more often and uh, not have such a gap in between uh, the times when we get to do this. In a haunt for jackals by best-selling author Mark Goodwin, Danny Walker's survival retreat has been devastated by violence since the detonation of the EMP. Regent Slusher's designs on absolute power have already brought him to Danny's doorstep once, leaving a trail of blood and heartbreak in his wake. Another conflict with a malicious dictator will spell certain death for the remaining members of the compound. Danny's only hope is to infiltrate Schlusher's camp and bring him down from the inside. It's a risky proposition. If he is caught, he'll be executed as a spy. But there is no other alternative. In this epic struggle between good and evil, Danny's mettle will be tested, his faith will be tried, and he'll have to dig deep for the courage to continue. Buy your copy of A Haunt for Jackals, book three of Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, in paperback, Kindle, or audio edition from Amazon.com today.